Hey there, it's Crystal Diaz here. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on a song. There's some nice re repeated patterns in this song, which I always look for when I'm, I'm choosing songs for students, because when you get songs that have repeated patterns, especially if they are occurring at specific a specific part, part in the voice, the song provides a really lovely opportunity to um, help the student through that particular area of the voice. So this particular song here, the chorus is actually repeatedly on this, um, which is an A flat, okay, A flat four, which is right above the middle C in regard to the typical female range. That's at the start, the cusp of that turnover or that transition between the lower register and the um, one like moving into a higher register area of the voice. But that's what we call the first bridge or the first passaggio. I, didn't, I noticed, I realized I didn't say the name of the song. It's used to be young by Miley Cyrus. Okay, so we're gonna start from the very beginning. As usual, I'll go through it line by line and I'll give you some pointers as to how I might teach a student um, to sing the song. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So there's a four bar intro. There's one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, Four. The truth is, it comes in on the uh, after the fourth bar. Okay, so the truth is bulletproof. There's no fooling you. I don't dress the same. So the truth is bulletproof. There's no fooling you. That's all in one phrase chunk. That's what I call it anyway. Phrase chunking is a word that I use in my vocal alignment system. It's what I use to teach my students in terms of how to break down a song. Um, I, I classify a phrase chunk as a chunk of sound. So essentially, um, it's defined by where you take your breath. So the truth is bulletproof. There's no fool in you That's one chunk of sound because I didn't take a breath anywhere in the middle of that Okay, so we take a breath after you I don't dress the same. That's the next phrase chunk The main thing here that I want to draw your attention to is where you are accenting I call this anchor points so if you take my vocal alignment system course, you'll know all about that but anchor points essentially is where you're where you're adding a little bit of that energy expression into the phrase. The truth is bulletproof, right? So bulletproof, the truth is bulletproof, right? There's no fool in you. You can hear that. Let me show you what it sounds like when I don't have these anchor points. The truth is bulletproof, there's no fooling you. I don't dress the same. So it's actually very easy to go off pitch, to go a little bit flat or a little sharp. And also it, f it feels like, I call this flat, ni flat lining, right? It's just like one flat line the whole way through. Okay, so do play with that anchor points. The truth is bulletproof, there's no fooling you. I don't dress the same, I don't dress. Two notes, I don't dress the same, and then two notes down, okay? Next line. Me and two, you say I was yesterday have gone all separate ways. Okay, so it's very similar. The only difference is the word ways has a little tail end that goes down. Me and who you say I was yesterday. Take a breath here. Have gone our separate ways. So separate ways, ways. Two notes on the word ways. Separate ways. So it's like if you visualize that as ba 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 four notes down. Alright, let's keep going. Left my living fast somewhere in the past cause that's a chasing car. Okay, so this one is one entire phrase chunk. That's what it seems like. Left my living fast somewhere in the past cause that's for chasing cars. Chasing cars. Okay, so da da da. It's just three notes down. But here, same thing. If you don't anchor, uh, if you don't, again, this is a terminology that I use with my students. This is not something that is officially used anywhere else except for inside my program. But if you've watched my videos, then you will have heard me say this all the time probably uh, but if you don't have these anchor points in the phrases um, then especially when it's a longer phrase chunk like this you're gonna run out of breath really easily this is relatively okay it's not that long but if you have a really long one then you're gonna be leaking air all over the place let me show you what I mean if I go left my living fast somewhere in the past cuz that's for chasing car you can hear how I'm just releasing all my air throughout that long line and even though I'm hitting the notes okay, you can hear that I'm leaking air and if this were any longer, I would definitely not be able to last. But if I go, left my living fast somewhere in the past, cause that's for chasing cars. Can you hear how I'm, I call this locking in the air and you lock in the air by adding in those, those anchor points. 
Left my living fast somewhere in the past Cause that's for chasing cars And you can really feel that the groove in that too it's bum bum bottom bum 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 bottom bum right you can hear it's the voice is bouncing i call this actually the bouncy voice effect all of these terminologies like i said are inside my vocal alignment system course so if that's something you're interested in be sure to check it out <laughs> okay so same thing so that's one entire phrase phrase chunk so hopefully by now you can see this is why i like the song right it's repeated and so there's not a whole lot to memorize in terms of the melodic changes but it's a nice opportunity for you to practice these pieces that I'm talking about, like anchoring and um, phrase chunking, things like that. So we're going here. Turns out open bars lead to broken hearts. So this, this is kind of a mouthful. There's a lot of words here too, a lot of um, consonants and vowels. So this is fun, actually. You can actually utilize the consonants. Turns out open bars, open bars lead to broken hearts. So they use the P's and the B's. I call this consonant integration again this is a terminology that is um, that i use with my students and we're integrating these consonants into in the into the technique of how we're singing the song turns out open bars you can hear it if i if you draw your attention to my consonants turns out open bars lead to broken hearts you can see how i'm actually handling them in a very specific way i'm not just going turns out open bars lead to broken hearts and going way too far that could be a stylistic choice to be honest but um, that's not something that i would train my students to do how i teach students to learn how to sing is um, find a way that helps you to stay in alignment or stay in balanced that helps you to get through the song without falling off the track if that makes sense stay balanced stay in control then when you get used to that and you normalize that feeling of balance what you're doing is actually getting to know your voice really really well and once you know your voice and you understand how your voice behaves and you feel it and you internalize it you can do anything you want right? you can totally slur your words if you want to to have that stylistic effect or you can flip into falsetto and and go more of that have more of that airy or tonal quality if you want to or you can even push your vocals a little bit for that dramatic effect if you want to uh, but i always tell students that you know let's not do that until we really understand the instrument before, otherwise you might just play with it so much that it breaks right we don't want to do that all right so for now let's go Turns out open bars lead to broken hearts. So we're still going ba 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 da ba 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 da ba. More of that um, punchier sound. And then here we change it up. Going way too far. Like da da da. We're lengthening that out. That's a nice um, dynamic shift. Let's go from the beginning until there. And then we'll jump in with the chorus. All right, four bar intro. Three, four, two, <laughs> two. Truth is bulletproof, there's no fool in you I don't dress the same Me and two you say I was yesterday on our separate ways Left my living fast somewhere in the past Cause that's for chasing cars Turns out open bars lead to broken hearts I'm going way too far Well done! Alright, so here's where we get into that repeated A flat four okay so it goes i know i used to be crazy i know i used to be fun so you can hear the i know that those that i the first i here you say all of the first notes here are all the same note and so sometimes it's helpful to draw your attention to that because then you're also reinforcing in your mind that that is a repeated note, it's the same note, but at the same time, you're, you also want to know that that's the beginning part of your first bridge for typical female vocal range. And why do we want to know that? Because uh, I think that f for all singers, it's, it's important for us to uh, learn to feel, be able to identify by feel where the bridges are in our voices approximately. Because you'll find that as you become more aware of the different bridges, you'll discover that most of our unhelpful habits bunch up there, <laughs> so to speak. So the more we can start to intuitively feel it in our bodies as we're singing where the, that, that uh, part of our range is, then the better we will be at making different choices, if that makes sense. Because then we'll just become aware that, oh, this feels tight or this feels unsteady or this feels hard to control. It's probably at one of my bridges and I know the techniques 
to, to shift that. How do you know the techniques? By practicing these tutorials, but also doing vocal exercises. And if you come in to join my vocal alignment system course, I have a whole library of vocal exercises that are specifically tailored towards helping my students to discover their voices on a deeper level, but also understand how to identify those transition points or those difficult spots in the range. So with that, we want to make sure that this note here is it, it feels comfortable. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you could do it. We don't want to do this. Oh no! Okay, because it's it's low enough that you could probably just strain your way up there. Oh no, I used to be crazy. Oh no! But that's not going to be conducive for long-term vocal health or, you know, helping you to stay in balance or in alignment, like I mentioned before. So, one, if, you're, if you find that you're doing that, you want to definitely bring down the volume of how, you're, of how much you're singing, bring down the volume, but also open up the, what I call the backspace. So basically open up your mouth a little bit more. Oh no, so you can think of it as a, instead of, oh no, it's oh no, oh no. Almost like it's a UH, if that makes sense. You're changing the shape of, the changing the way that you're articulating that word. Okay, so it's instead of, oh no, oh no, I used to be crazy. If you want, you could actually add in a little H too. Oh no, but then that expels more air out. So you can experiment with that, see what feels right for you. Right, so always become a, be aware of how it feels to you. If it feels like you're straining, you are. <laughs> but put it that way, you probably are. If it feels like it's tight or feels uncomfortable, then that's alerting you to something that you're doing in your technique that's throwing you off, okay? Not to say that it shouldn't feel like anything. You're going to feel something, of course, but it shouldn't be pain or discomfort or like really heavy, like really like you're grinding into the voice. We don't want to do that. So you have a couple of options here. So I'm going to go with the changing the vowel part. So instead of going, ah, no, we're going to go, oh, ah, no, oh, ah, no. We're going to practice shaping the vowel of I more like an, uh, ah, oh, no, I used to be crazy. You can hear that actually creates a little bit more of a deeper tonal color. Ah, oh, no, I used to be crazy. Ah, oh, no, I used to be fun. You say you, and then the word, the, the word you is already in, in that kind of longer tunnel shaped sound anyway. You say I used to be wild. And I think this makes sense because of the word used, used to, used to, used to. The word used to is, it carries a lot of ooh naturally. And so sh shaping your mouth in this way is gonna make the whole thing sound more uniform. And it's easier to stay consistent in that part of the voice as well. Right, so right now I'm talking about vowel modification and that's a huge part of vocal coaching, understanding how to modify vowels or how to optimize the vowels to make it easier for a student or yourself to, to sing in difficult spots of the voice. I know I used to be crazy. I wonder if you can hear where my anchor points are. I know I used, used to be crazy, used to be crazy. I know I used to be fun. You say, anchor point on the you, you say I used, also the word use, used to be wild and wild. Use the nice ah vowel there to extend that word out, wild. And the last line here is, I say I used to be young. So same note, same note, down, up. I say I used to be young, young. That one goes up a little bit. The next part of the chorus is, jumping back up to that A flat. You tell me time has done change me. Can you hear where I'm accenting, accenting or where I have my anchor points? I would go, you tell me time has done change me. I would anchor there, okay? Where I put my anchor points is not an exact science. It's more of an experience. Um, and you will develop that as you continue to practice this way of approaching songs. It is different from more traditional classical ways of learning, uh, uh, learning how to sing. Uh, I find this easier to teach my students as well, easier for them to feel the results and easier for them to stay consistent and know how to break down a song, any song that they want to sing. Anchor points. The more you get used to, do, to sprinkling them into your songs, the better you will be at making better choices as to where those anchor points should be. But for now, you can just follow my, my guidance, okay? Next line. That's fine, I've had a good run. This good here does pop up a little bit. It's a, actually a, a B, four, which is the middle of the 
first bridge for the typical female vocal range. So I tell you that because problems can definitely, or challenges can definitely crop up in this area of the voice. So here, luckily, the, the word is good. So I would jump on that letter G, that consonant G, and use that to continue to anchor down. Good run, good run. So you can go da da da. So good almost has carries two notes there. Good run. And then um, you, when you do that, you're going to be able to stay more in control of your power and your effort, as opposed to doing something like good, good run. You see how I'm reaching up there? I'm not really anchoring down. Good. But if I utilize that consonant G and I integrate that into my singing, good run, then it reminds me to anchor down into this note here, which is in an awkward part of the voice. Okay, so that's fine. I've had a good run. Next line. I know I used to be crazy. So same thing with the eyes there. I know I used to be crazy. Pull back the dynamic volume here for that last line. That's cause I used to be young. And then you're done with the chorus. All right, let's sing from the chorus uh, until here. Sleep two broken hearts, I'm gone way too far. I know I used to be crazy. That's cause I used to be young. Keep listening. Take one for it out's not worth crying about the things you can't erase. Like tattoos and regrets, words I never met and ones that got away. Alright, so the pattern is very much the same, and I can I notice that she's not breathing in between those parts either, so these are just one long phrase chunk. Take one pour it out, it's not. So it's not becomes one syllable. It's not worth crying about. Crying about becomes two syllables. Crying about, crying about. Okay, so here definitely you want to utilize some of those consonants to keep the words clear. Take one pour it out, it's not, it's not worth crying about, crying about. So you can hear my my B there. So even though we're, we're smooshing the words together, uh, hopefully when you are um, utilizing the consonants and singing into them a little bit more, then the audiences will still be able to hear what it is that you're saying. Next line here, the things you can erase. Hopefully you can hear where I'm anchoring there. The things you can erase, definitely on the word can't. Like tattoos and regrets, words I never meant, and ones that got away. So as I'm singing, really visualize or um, notice where I'm placing those anchor points. The more you can tune your awareness to hearing where I'm doing it as well, then you'll be able to practice that and discover um, your own way of doing it that may feel better for you as well. But for now, you can just follow my guidance. Like tattoos and regrets, words I never meant, words I never meant. And those are the anchor points. And ones, definitely on the word ones there. And ones that got, I would utilize the G. Every time I see a G, um, I would use it, if that makes sense. Using it as a way to remind myself to stay anchored. If it makes sense stylistically and it makes sense to the melody, utilize those consonants. B's are great, G's are good, N's are really good too. Let's keep listening. Lift my lip oh. fast somewhere in the past and took another road. Turns out crowded rooms empty, I'd assume there's somewhere else to go. Oh. That's right, there's a variation here, so it jumps up. <clears throat> Let's break it down. So we've just done like tattoos and regrets, words I never meant, and ones that got away. Left my, it, it goes up a little bit. Left my living fast. So that's the melody. Left my living fast. You can hear once I anchor in, you can hear how that just makes the whole melody shine a little bit, as opposed to left my living fast somewhere in the past. That's fine if you're just learning the melody, learning the notes. Left my living fast somewhere in the past and took another road. It really stays on the same note over and over again. That's an E for E above middle C, in case you're wondering. We're going to anchor in. Left my living fast somewhere in the past and took another road. Ba 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 ba. That's where we're going to anchor in there. And took another road. Two notes on the word road. And then we jump up. 
to that A flat. Turns out crowded rooms empty, I'd assume. So definitely want to utilize those consonants to anchor in. Turns, turns. You can almost feel it in my body and see it as I'm doing it. Turns out crowded rooms, the CR of the word crowded. Turns out crowded rooms empty. Rooms and empty, I would link them together just like how Miley Cyrus is doing it too. That helps you to stay really anchored in. Locking your air in this way and then staying anchored in is going to help you when you got to jump up even higher here for that last line. There's somewhere else to go. Oh, oh. So there's somewhere else, somewhere else. So the else has a little bit of a embellishment coming down. There's somewhere. So say somewhere. I would recommend doing that just to open up the vowel a bit more. There's somewhere else. If that little wobble is hard for you to get, then just slide down or glide down somewhere else to go oh somewhere else you see i'm just gliding down but how she does it is something like there's somewhere else else there's actually a like a three note there else somewhere else da 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 really fast somewhere else to go and then to go whoa to go whoa to go whoa oh and then we pause whoa Oh, and then we um, sing the O, oh, two notes on the word O oh, oh, there as a tacked on a um, little ad lib. There's somewhere else to go, oh, oh. Okay, so practice that a few times. That's a little fun little expressive part of the song here. And then it goes into the chorus. And let's see if there's any variations. But, but for now, let's go to take one, pour it out, all the way to somewhere else to go, oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's sing it together. That's cause I used to be young Take one, pour it out, it's not worth crying about the things you can't erase Like tattoos and regrets, words I never met the ones that got away Live my living fast somewhere in the past and took another road Turns out crowded rooms empty, I'd assume there's somewhere else to go Chorus. Okay, so let's break down this ad lib section. So whenever I break down ad libs like this, they are essentially, they're not really words, right? They're just oh, whoa, ooh, oh, stuff like that. Then it's important to know what vowel it is that we're using. And also you, we can use it as an opportunity to practice shaping these vowels because um, that's a huge part of, of being able to be in control of your vocal instrument. So let's look at exactly what vowels we are dealing with here. So the first section here is oh. So we melodically just visualize that. Da, 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 da. So it's two notes coming down and then down, up, down. Oh. It might actually be tricky for you if you feel like it's Oh, doing that is harsh on the voice or feels tough on the throat, then add a little W or add a little H to soften out that approach. Oh, you see, I'm adding a little H to it that can ease off some pressure in the throat if you are feeling that, or you can add a little W. Whoa, you could do that if you wanted to, but she does it as oh, we call that a glottal attack where it's that, that, that quick uh. uh uh sound is a very crisp sound. Oh, so it's oh. Okay, next line is the same. Oh, and it's it's a good way to practice this little wiggle thing, right? Oh, that bit there. So if you find that it's slow, like oh, it's hard for you to do that. That's okay. This is part of just practicing. It's probably because you are either holding the vowel in a suboptimal way, in a way that's not super conducive to 
allowing the sound to come out. Or it could be that you are just pushing too much air out. There's many different reasons why that could happen. Or it could just be that you um, need to be practicing a little bit more flexibility and agility in the voice. So don't be dismayed. Don't feel like you have to do it that way, but use this as an opportunity to notice what is challenging for you. That's a huge part of learning to sing is, is paying better attention and noticing what's difficult and, and then use, utilizing different strategies or techniques to navigate those difficult spots in the voice. So if this is challenging, just go with it. Keep going anyway. And I would say just watch your volume. Don't go too loud because you definitely don't want to force or feel like you're pushing your voice in any way because we are repeating this quite a few times. So it goes, oh, okay. Oh, so it repeats twice. Then the next bit here it goes, oh, uh. we change, we are changing vowels here. We're going, oh, uh. oh, uh. so it's three parts to this here. Oh, uh. oh, uh. oh, uh. oh, oh, so the last repeated line here, oh, uh. oh, uh. oh, uh. oh, oh, has a standalone O. Oh. And then we jump up, yeah, to a yeah, has two notes there, yeah. Make sure we're anchoring on that letter Y for the word yeah. Yeah, really, hey, yeah. Use that technique to approach this last bit here. All right, so because the next section is a little bit different, let's just practice this a little bit with Miley Cyrus and then we'll break down the next section. Be crazy. That's cause I used to be young. Okay, so the only difference here is that it does jump up and you notice actually she's she's going whoa she's adding a little w there for that higher one so after we've done oh uh, oh uh, oh uh, oh yeah then we jump up this is a b4 in case you're wondering that's a um, again right in the middle of the first bridge for a typical female vocal range whoa it's definitely safer to add a W here as opposed to doing ah, that's going to be so much harder. Again, it's because it's right in the middle of the first bridge. Those areas of the voice are so important for any singer to know in relation to their own voices because then, you know, we could be struggling with parts of a song and not know why until we realize, oh, it's on a bridge, that's why. And then you can utilize different techniques and strategies to navigate through that section. Okay, so this is a perfect example. Instead of going, ah, which is way harsher on the voice, we're going, whoa. So we're using that W, uh, the W constant to make it easier to hit this note. And in terms of the pattern of the melody, it's the same as the one we did before. It's just in a different part of the range. Whoa! So it's two notes down. Whoa! And then down, up, down. Whoa! And then down, up, down again. Whoa! Then we repeat it. Whoa! Repeat it twice. And then we go, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh. Exactly the same as what we did before in that first section that we broke down. All right, let's try this whole section together from the beginning, from the first section and the second section all together. Here we go. Watch those vowels. I used to be crazy. That's cause I used to be young. To be crazy, messed up, but God was it fun. I know it used to be wild. That's good. So this is basically the same melody of the chorus, but an octave lower, which is why this can be quite low for some singers. 
In fact, it's kind of low for me, to be honest. And so if that's the case, if you're finding that you're feeling like you're scraping the bottom of your range, pop the key up. There's no reason to force your voice to sing at a key that just, just does not feel comfortable for you. If I were to ever perform this song for whatever reason, I would actually pop the key up by one semitone, just so just plus one because I, I would probably express it better, um, but that's something that you can experiment with. So if that is happening for you, then you wanna be practicing this at a higher, at a higher key. And you can easily find that on YouTube by just typing in the, the name of the song, um, used to be young, Miley Cyrus, karaoke, higher key. Then you'll, you'll most likely find it. For most popular songs, you'll find different key variations. Okay, so it goes, I know I used to be crazy. Very talking feeling. I know I used to be crazy. You can even talk that through. Messed up, but God, was it fun. Messed up, but God, was it fun, right? And you can really talk through it to get that stylistic effect of um, like you're really having a conversation with somebody. God, was it fun, was it fun. Those little inflections there will really sell this or really uh, make this fun to sing and also fun to listen to there too. So be be playful with it, right? Because it's a, it's a fun memory, like it's messed up, but Man, it was fun thinking of those days. And then it goes, I know I used to be wild. Then it jumps up here. That's cause I used to be young. And I think there's a little bit of a, a phrasing thing that she does here. That's cause I used to be, used to be, she pops that, used to be young to really emphasize that part, which makes sense because that's literally the title of the song, kind of like a cathartic moment there. So it's nice to really uh, change that phrasing. That's cause I used to be young and ba 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 like that. Again, make sure you're utilizing those consonants to really anchor into this part of the, of the phrase here. It's really easy to want to just yell this out. That's cause I used to because you could be wrapped up in the expression of the song, but you wanna, if you're practicing for the betterment of your technique and to stay in balance and make sure you're, you're really anchoring in here. That's cause, use the consonants, that's, that's, that's cause I used to be young. Okay, have fun with that one and let's see what happens next. I used to be young. Okay, so it's actually very similar. There's only one part where she changes the lyrics and adds, adds a new set of lyrics to the chorus, essentially. But the melody is very much the same. Those wasted nights are not wasted. Those wasted nights are not. Those nights not. That's where I would anchor in. Those wasted nights are not wasted. I remember. This one is I remember. I remember everyone, and then the vri of every. I know this is a bit counterintuitive because we don't go, I remember everyone, we don't speak that way, but the way that it is written melodically, um, it makes sense to accent or to um, anchor into that part of the word, even though it feels a little unnatural if we were to speak it that way. I remember everyone, I remember everyone, like that, next line. I know I used to be crazy. That's cause I used to be young. Same thing. And this part here, you already know it. So now you're actually ready to sing from beginning all the way to the end. But for now, I would recommend you can pause this video and just um, sing from the oh, oh, that part there, all the way to the end to just really dial in the, the melody and some of the changes that we have here or the variations that we have here, and then go ahead and practice it from beginning to end. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you enjoyed this song. Literally any song you learn will have opportunities for you to learn something. And so if this is a song that is new for you, awesome. If this is a song that you've done before, hopefully some of these tools and strategies that I've shared with you here 
will give you something new or a new perspective to practice. And of course, finally, if you like this tutorial, do check out some of the other tutorials that I have on this channel. I also have a podcast where I talk about using the voice for speaking as well. And lastly, if you want to dive in more and you like the way that I teach, then do consider enrolling in my vocal alignment system course where I literally go through all the different um, components that I use to teach all of my students, whether they are seasoned professional singers or total beginners who are starting from scratch. These are the same tools and techniques and approaches that I use um, no matter where you are in your journey because ultimately my goal is for you to understand your unique voice and so that you can use your voice the way you want to. So do consider joining. All the links to everything that you may need to join me inside of my programs are in the description box. So check it out and I hope to see you inside one of my courses one day. All right, take care and I'll see you again next time.